Hey guys, Stimwalt here. Real quick, check the video description if you are interested in joining my Discord community for the channel. I've been around since 2011, so I'd like to meet you guys. So yeah, join if you're interested. But today we will be looking at Legends of Ultima Custom Housing. Uh, you guys have seen the house placement tool before, but the difference here is that we now have customizable options and classic options. So uh, we're going to look at the small wooden house classic, and then we're going to look at the small wooden house customizable. We will also look at the medium wooden house customizable and the L-shaped yard and the L-shaped patio options. Um, now, the L-shaped options are large homes. Obviously, the medium one is medium and small is small. There will be more options in the future. So remember, this is just a technical demo. This is not telling you exactly what we will offer on release. But uh, yeah, so let's start by looking at a eastern facing classic home. And when we confirm our placement, you'll notice it'll pull money straight from our bank account. In the lower left hand corner, it says 36,800 gold was removed from your bank. So this is very important to understand um, because in the past, people would place with deeds on them when they're in the wilds and they would get PK'd and basically uninstalled because they lost all their gold. So we don't want that. <laughs> now here's the user interface. You've seen it before, um, but you will notice that the customize and ownership option no longer has customized house for the um, for the small house classic. Um, it will for the customizable. Um, and we also made some adjustments to the UI. It's more compact, it's more user-friendly. Um, and we have everything that you would expect from, from that UI, okay? So now I'm gonna demo real quick. If we go into customize ownership, demolishing the house will, uh, it's permanent, and it will refund the money back into the bank box you see in the lower left-hand corner, okay? So you get the placement cost back, but that's it. Now, if I'm gonna place a customizable small home, you'll notice that the placement cost is basically twice that of a classic home. So we'll do east, we'll place it, and then we will confirm it and it'll pull it straight from our bank um, using our house placement tool. Um, now, when we go inside the home, you'll see customize house's appearance. We click on this and we will see foundation, roof, and wall options. So it comes with wood and stone to begin with. But if you were to go out and somehow acquire these blueprints, you can then really maximize the design potential of your custom home. Now looking here, we have blueprint design for stone. And it's for small homes with the foundation being the piece, okay? And we have three options. This is a uh, wood and cobblestone. And just so you know, we're gonna have way more than just three options. This is just a technical demo, okay? So stone and cobblestone is another one, okay? So what you do is you have to be the owner of the home, you're inside the home, and you double left click on it, and it'll ask you if you want to confirm uh, assigning it to this house. And when you do, it unlocks it. And the user interface, if you click, it will appear We'll fix that in the future so it auto updates. But now I can toggle stone. See, it means it's that simple. So your question is probably, okay, that's cool. How do I get these blueprints? Um, I'm gonna be purposely vague on that because, um, but I can tell you this, you're not just gonna go to some non-humanoid boss in the, in the base of a dungeon and kill them and they'll just for whatever reason have a design plan on their corpse. That makes no sense. Um, we will definitely um, have the player economy play a role in um, in uh, customization of blueprints, okay? Um, and, but the team is really, we're trying to fully flesh out the system first, so I don't want to leak any information <laughs> yet. <laughs> I probably will, but I don't want to leak any information yet on how you acquire these blueprints. But just needless to say, it's going to involve the player economy because that's the direction our game is going in, okay? So I'm just going to apply a few more here. So now we have quite a few um, foundation options. And don't fret too much over like the door placement or the wall placement. Those are all just coordinates that we can fix. Um, or if there's any weirdness with the transparency of the walls, it's, it's again, it's just a bug that we can fix. Uh, the big thing to take away from this is that, you know, the player now has control over the design of their home if they pick a custom customized house. And that's super important uh, because you want to be sort of the king of your castle or the queen of your castle. And this really allows you to do that. So you can 
you know, to your heart's content grind or whatever it is you have to do to acquire all of these plans and you could really maximize the design of, of that home. Okay. So now we will add uh, five roofs, I believe. And um, let's go ahead and click in the user interface. And uh, you actually don't have to go outside, but, I, you know, whatever. So here's a brown roof, blue roof, uh, gray, and we also have red and wood. Okay. Uh, these lists are going to be long. Um, we have full potential to continue to add on to these elements. We can have incredibly rare versions, like an incredibly rare roof that has like moss growing on it or wildflowers, very rare roof, um, roofs um, or very rare walls or foundations, like maybe foundations with like blood splatter on the floor or uh, rare walls that have very unique windows that are hard to acquire, maybe stained glass. I mean, it, the sky is the limit. I'm not saying that those things will be in our game necessarily, like, <laughs> but you can see the potential for what we can do in terms of um, artistic design and customization, especially once we approach like the rare, rare blueprints that are offered in the game. Um, and I've also thought about applying a blueprint, you know, that would allow your home to be visible on the map to other players. So almost giving it like a landmark status on the map. I think that would be really cool. Um, but anyway, you know, we can iterate on that endlessly. This is mainly technically showing you what we can do right now and what you should expect um, when we launch. So, so yeah, um, I actually think I like the Venetian look the most. But um, all of these are designed. All these designs are really cool. You see the walls kind of pop in through the roof there. We'll fix that. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's <laughs> it's it's a little bit like a homeowners association in the sense that we do control to an extent the art design and what you can select because we all played the private shards that allowed you to have like fluorescent green or neon yellow, pink um, walls. I mean, it was just horrible. I mean. It, the, it just made the world look totally fake. Um, so we do control the art a little bit, but we allow um, allow players to to pick from from the sets that we that we offer, so that nothing really clashes, um, and that we keep that nice gritty Ultima Online feeling with our housing, and uh, and the players still have that freedom. So it's not just like oh, here's a bunch of houses we designed, you have to live in them. Uh, no, it's there's more freedom. Um, and uh, anyway, getting back to the house itself. In Ultima Online, the size of the house doesn't necessarily matter as much as the location does. So for example, if I have a tiny little customized home like this, but it's in the brick graveyard, or it's at the crossroads between major cities, or it's right next to a dungeon, it vastly increases the value of that home and that real estate. And so some people might ask, well, why would I invest all this time adding to all of these um, customization designs to a small home? Why wouldn't I just go for a large home? And the answer is simple. Certain locations just won't fit large or medium sized homes. So you have to have a small home. And by adding all of these design customizations to it, you increase the value of the property. Okay. And you can transfer the property when you sell it to somebody. But when you demolish the property, you lose all of those customizations, all of them, right? So you can transfer it, sell it, and it will transfer the customizations because the customizations stay with that property. But if you demolish it, then the owner only gets back the placement cost. They lose all of the blueprints that they applied to the home. So it'll be important for you to keep that in mind. So when I demolish this, I'm just going to get back placement cost. I don't, I don't keep any those customizations, they're not refunded, right? Everything in the house drops to the floor. <laughs> I lose all my blueprints. So it's important to keep in mind, especially when we launch the UL map, do you go classic with the intent of giving, uh, getting a larger, like this medium home to get a larger medium customized home or uh, even a large home? Or do you begin with a small customized home because you know this is the one I'm going to be living in for a long time because it's in a location where you simply can't have a medium or a large. It's too crowded or there's just not enough room. So 
things to keep in mind. Um, it also adds a lot of complexity to the end game. Everybody, regardless of play style, cares about their housing. So it's very important that we focus on this, make it really, really attractive, and have tons of replay value, okay? These lists will be very long. They'll have rares. Um, everyone will want this. It's it's not like, oh, I'm a role player. I'm a, you know, pvp -er, I'm a more into PvE. I'm a PK. Regardless of your play style, this will be important to you. <laughs> Trust me. And this uh, L-shaped home actually has a little bit of yard there, a little patch of yard for your, your gardening. Um, and gardening will change on the UL map. Um, I'll leave that for another video. But needless to say, people might see that little patch of land and go, that's not enough for gardening. Um, it will be, trust me. Gardening is going to change. That will be more than enough for the new gardening. Okay? And we'll go over to this other L-shaped large home. And it has a patio. Um, in my opinion, just my opinion, I think this is really a great guild house because you can put the chests out on the patio and have your guild members access those chests without having them access the rest of your house. But it's also a great option for a vendor home. You, you could make it both your main living area, your main house, but also your vendor location at the same time. I do think this will be tricky, though, to actually place in a hotspot because it does take up so much room you would have to be pretty strategic on on being lucky enough to get that much room at a really really popular location so yeah um this list will grow um the design list will grow the customization list will grow um and uh, and the amount of options for housing will grow so this is by no means the extent of it this is just a technical demo so hopefully you guys enjoyed it and uh hopefully this excites you too and thanks for watching <laughs>